Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. On this week's show, we visit the great state of Montana to sample some of their outstanding trout fishing. First, we join Tom Rosenbauer along with Molly Semenek as they float the Yellowstone River. Then we join Phil Rowley and Fly Fishing Hall of Famer Bob Jacklin as they fished a mighty Madison. And finally, Tom Rosenbauer joins Ben Jensen for some small stream action on the East Gallatin. That is amazing. There's a take. Oh, nice. The power. All right. Montana is one of the most beautiful states in the U.S. Towering mountains, broad valleys, and massive prairie all combine to create a stunning setting for visitors. Montana represents the untamed, the wild, and the natural. For all its ruggedness, the beautiful mountains and foothills of Montana provide some of the most breathtaking vistas on the earth. Landscapes so big and open and rugged, they stretch your soul. The fact that you can see for so many miles is why Montana is known as Big Sky Country. Let's join author and new fly fishing host Tom Rosenbauer and tie the knot fly fishing owner Molly Semenek as they float the Yellowstone River. Molly, this river is really moving. Where should I be looking relative to the boat when we're, when we're flying down these banks? Tom, try to look downstream. Um, because we're moving so quickly. And then as far as structure, I have a little rhyme. Wood is good, rocks rock, foam is home. Those are the kind of structures that the fish will be in. Okay, Molly, we got a streamer and a nymph. How are we gonna fish this? This is a great combination. We're going to fish the streamer in a dead drift. Hopefully the fish will be attracted to the streamer and then maybe eat the smaller nymph or eat the streamer, it's a double. No. Yeah, it is. Is it? It's a good fish. Yeah. It is. I thought it was a snag. So did oh, I. nice fish. For, like one of the first casts. Big brown, brown trout. Nice. Took the streamer too. Cool. Tom, I'm going to pull over to these rocks and get into some slower water. All right. Now look at that water that he was in. That was so nondescript. Who would have thought? Pretty fish. Mm. Ooh, that's a good shot. He's going to need a rest. You'd be surprised with this current, how shallow I have to go. Rod tip up, head up. Beautiful. Woohoo! Barbless hook. It'll come right yes! up. Yes! in the water. Put him in the water. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Oh. We'll get another one. Ha! Yes! That's nice. what I wanted for Tom. Thank yes. you, Molly. Oh. We're going to fish River Right, and this will be a cast that is going to be off your, on your non-dominant shoulder. Particularly, we don't have wind on your right side, but if we did, this would be really an important point to, um, Remember, you want your hand to stay in your natural casting place, right side of your ear. And just tilt the butt section of your rod enough so that the point, tip of your rod, which is nine feet away, is over your left shoulder. And then you won't get hooked, you won't hook anyone in the boat, and it's a strong cast because your hand is still in the area that it normally casts in. There we go. Fish There's on. Fish. Faster water. Yep. It's a brown. It's a brown drought on the nymph, on the PT, on the Good pheasant job, tail Tom. nymph. You picked a fly. We picked a different fly. Put and the we guide finally, out of business. We no, you were going to say the same thing, Molly. You were thinking of the exact same fly. What a pretty brown trout. God, these brown trout are beautiful. Here, release the tension on my rod tip. Got a nice heavy tippet. Nice slow water here. Whoop! 
fly came loose, perfect. Wow, that's a nice fish, too. Wow, that fish was in shallow water. My God, we could have caught him on a dry. <laughs> I don't think so. No? I don't know, he was, he was looking. He was looking up. When I was a kid, reading books, there was this about book I had trout. about the yeah, about Dan Bailey catching Yellowstone brown trout. Well, you're doing it now, and, Tom. And uh, you know, I, I just I just have this vivid image of Dan Bailey with this beautiful butter-colored brown trout, and that picture stuck with me for years. Wow, that's a good fish. Living the dream. Oh my! Man, did he eat Look that? Look at too. his head. In shallow, shallow water. Wow. He's in a pout. No, he's not. Let's move over to the mighty Madison River and join new fly fisher host, Phil Rowley, and fly fishing hall of famer and owner of Jacklin's Fly Shop, Bob Jacklin. The West Yellowstone region is an area of stunning beauty and the springboard to some of the West's most outstanding trout waters. Bordering the western entrance to the world famous Yellowstone National Park, the area is a naturalist's dream. Rich concentrations of wildlife, including bison, grizzly bears, and wolves abound. West Yellowstone is also steeped in fly fishing culture. Home to the annual Federation of Fly Fishers Conclave, it is one of the few places where someone casting on the lawn of the West Yellowstone Museum is seen as commonplace. Our guide today is world-class fisherman, flycaster, and tire Bob Jacklin. Bob has taught countless people how to fly fish and has owned his shop and guide service for over 30 years. He has been guiding in the West Yellowstone area since 1969. Bob knows the region's dreams intimately, and we are looking forward to exploring some of his favorite fall waters. This area here is really unique. This is the main Madison River as it comes out of Hebgen Dam and flows into Quake Lake. Here we have the large Terranorsis salmon fly in the spring. We've got some green drakes later. We got a whole host of caddis. Golden Stone, we got everything you can imagine hatches out here through the season of the year, starting about mid-June into pretty much October. But this time of year, in early September, we still have a lot of hoppers around, and if you look up in the sky, we're seeing some flying ants. So today, I'm gonna start out with a grasshopper fly. We're not gonna catch a lot, but we might bring up a big fish. That's what we're after. Terrestrials are insects that do not have any aquatic component to their life cycle. They become important when their habits and numbers get themselves on the water in front of opportunistic trout. By late summer, many terrestrial insects are mature, active, and available. Grasshoppers, ants, beetles, crickets, even bees and wasps form an important dietary component for all trout and whitefish in the late summer and fall. Up ahead of us, we've got a junction of two uh, current seams, two uh, arms of the river coming together. Bob spotted a couple of fish there already. Bob, how are you going to approach this? I'm going to stick this one on the right side. I'm going to get down on the hands and knees, close as I can to make a short cast, but I want it to be accurate. Well, the there first he is cast, again. there he is again. The first cast has got to be right on target, and that fish appears to be feeding on little olives. I was going to use the hopper, but I think I'll change and I'll give him, I'll match the hatch. We'll okay. put on a little olive fly and see if I can't take that fish on an olive. Let's go do it. I got a light tippet, so I hope I don't break them off. But let's give him a try. That fly might be a little big. Jesus. 
That was almost like he came up at the last minute, changed his mind. Yeah, he did that. Yep, exactly right. He never took the fly, but he sure came up on it. Jesus. There's a head and tail rise, Bob. See yep. that off your right shoulder? Over up here? Yeah, that was yeah. a head tail. That was a snout of a trout. Yeah, that's, I'm looking for that. That, that was a delicate, you could just see the tip of his nose Ooh, come out. See that second time. I had a, a wake underneath that fly, but he didn't take the fly. Most of them are whitefish, I think, but that one's a trout. Good brown, good fish. Maybe a rainbow, rainbow, I think. Whatever it is, a good fish. Finally, a little nice rainbow. Take in my slack. I got a lot of slack because I was casting a long line, so. Get down the river and fight him down. Not real big, but he's two pounds, maybe a little better. That's a good fish. Take a little line. I thought that was a big brown for sure. Saw him. I'm going to get down here and get in the water and see if I can net him. Nice and easy. Bring him down, head in. Got him. Yeah, All right, let me, you can take my rod. Yeah, I'll do that. And I'll, maybe I can get in here with the hemostat and take that fly out. It's in the roof of his mouth. And then, I'm just. All right, I'm gonna show the fish and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna let him go. Just hold him. We can show them tight. Oh, nice Lord. big 20 inch rainbow. Gorgeous fish. On a dry fly, let's let him go and let's let him swim away. There he goes. Perfect. I thought that was a brown. Ho, ho, ho. That's a good white fish. Phil, when, uh, when we yeah. come back, you get this pool. Oh, smoke. You may want to drift a little nymph under a hopper. Uh, yeah, yeah right. exactly. I'll try it in close here, and then I'll get out of your way and new fish. Yeah. Be a, a few little... minutes yet, so. <laughs> well, there's a trout. I hope we get some rising fish on this. They're not taking on dry. They're... Well, that one took a dry. I saw it. That one actually took the dry. Small uh, olive. I'm just on my knees here. I'm about to crawl into position. We've got a fish rising just up one of the arms of this junction of two arms of the river. I'm going to use a hopper. We've got meadow grasses full of hoppers right now. The trout and the whitefish are opportunistic. They're coming up and feeding. So Bob has recommended that approach. Stay low so we don't spook the fish. I'm going to crawl into position. Hopefully, he'll take my hopper. Make that cast. Watch your line. You don't get tangled in that damn oh, yeah. That's a big problem. I've been wanting to get some of that stuff out of there. OK. Be ready. Be nice to get a grab in there. Right. Oh, got, got him. him. Good fish. Got him. Good fish. Came up and ate the hopper. Excellent. Well, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. I'm gonna go well coached, Bob. Well coached. Bring him down this way. Maybe we can get another one out of there. Yeah, he's trying to take me back under into his Looks home. Looks like a good fish. That's a great fish. Just come up and sipped it. It's a breezy day, hopper pattern. Now we're talking. Just sipped her down. First drift in there. Perfect. What a gorgeous fish. All right. What a nice trophy. Yeah, we'll just let the rod absorb the. Yeah. There his head's up. Got him. Well, Big brown. Gone. Hey, Woo. Phil. <laughs> that That's is a what good... we're talking about. Well, so his head is up river and he's breathing nicely. This is another 20 inch fish. I got a nice rainbow, and Phil got this nice brown first cast right there. What a fish, so I want to wet my hands. Oh, that water's right. cool. I got so... the net, so you want to hold them up for the camera, we'll let them go. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, let me get out of the way. Beautiful light. Montana brown. Look That's at a that. Montana brown for sure. That's why you come to Montana in the fall. Gorgeous fish. On a Bank dry fishing. fly on a hopper. On hoppers. They've been blowing into All the right. water. Nice. What a gorgeous Face fish. Face them upstream and let's let them swim. That's right. There we go. Right up river. Yeah, and Put get him the... in there and let him go. And just sit there and he'll. When he's there he ready, goes. he's getting ready. Make sure he's good and strong. And there he goes. Let's rejoin Tom Rosenbauer 
along with top guide Ben Jensen from Montana Fins and Feathers for some small stream action on the East Gallatin. Very nice. The brown. Yeah. Good. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh no, not again. There you go. Nice work. Get out of there. Is that a brown or a rainbow? I think it's a brown. I can't tell though. Well, you know, now it looks I, like it a rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah. Looked and fought like a brown. Yeah, nice rainbow. Yeah, pretty. Beautiful fish. Been caught before a few times. <laughs> Pretty fish. You know, a lot of people worry about what fly to put on. Do I put on a dry? Do I put on a nymph? Do I put on a streamer? Well, it's often the case that all three of them will work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try a little challenge here. I'm gonna try to catch a fish on a nymph and a dry and a streamer, all in this little pool that I've never fished before. Besides changing the angles when you streamer fish, the other thing you want to do is to change your retrieve speed. So sometimes you might want to just let the streamer swing around in the current, just like that. Other times, you might want to give it a fast trip, like that. Sometimes the fish are very aggressive. You might want to give it an erratic strip. So strip, strip, stop, strip, strip, stop. Play with your retrieves. You never know what the fish are going to like. All right. On a dead, whoa! Whoa! All right, we've got our streamer fish. We've got our <laughs> nymph fish, we've got our streamer fish. All we need now is a dry fly fish. And that was a jumping rainbow. Whoa! Wow. Risky fish. They got big hearts in this river. Wow, they do. <laughs> Gotta touch them though. Doesn't count until we touch them. Wow, this fish. You're right, they have big hearts, Ben. God, that's <laughs> a fat fish. Looks like a little steelhead. The dry fly fish, yes, the challenge. <laughs> the challenge has been met. Nice fish, too. I can't move them. <laughs> and I believe it's a brown trout. Yes, a brown trout. A beautiful brown trout, yay! Oh. Dry, nymph, and streamer. We don't want to show that. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, nice fish. Wow. These fish are so hot. That fish took the yellow humpy, believe it or not. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, but I put that fly through there before. Yeah. That's funny. I don't think he was feeding quite yet. Yeah, but... maybe not. Maybe not. Flies needed when coming to Montana would be your standard dry flies, such as Adams, Pale Morning Duns, and Elk-Haired Caddis. Bring along a supply of nymphs, such as Pheasant Tails, Hare's Ears, and Prince Nymphs, and include a supply of woolly buggers in all colors. Sometimes you get to a fish where you can't present the fly from a downstream position, so you have to get ahead of the, the snag like we have here and do a presentation. And it's really easy. 
All you do is kind of bounce back and just follow the fly through with your rod. That way, when you bounce back a little bit like that, gives you some slack, and then you get a short drift in through there. There he is. Nice. Brown trout, I think. Yep, yep. Ate the PMD. We hope you've enjoyed the show and highly recommend Montana as one of your future angling adventures. For more information on today's show and others in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to get all of our weekly uploads. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Montana Office of Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.